اهلين تركي تفضل فجأة طلعت من الكول ما اعرف وش صاير اه لا شوية سكرنا احنا بس تسرعت نعم غير باك اوكي ذا ربوت تو ستارت جست ويتنج فور مور اتنديز تو اتند استاذ تركي جرب تعمل لنفسك ان ميوت ان ميوت اوكي يس كريكت السلام عليكم ايفريبودي Welcome back to another episode of uh, ATC Talks. Uh, I'm truly pleased today to be with you all and to see new attendees for today's event, as well as to introduce our guest speaker who joins us for the second time. He was with us last time with the Internet of Things. We have an interesting topic today to be delivered by one of the system architects from Cisco. Before we begin, please do note that we are recording this event and questions may be raised after the discussion. We are very lucky today as our guest speaker is an expert from Cisco. He joined Cisco in 2015 as system engineer in Muscat, providing Cisco technology solutions to selected ministries in Oman government. With a successful track record, this led to lead pre-sales activates for ministries and medium to large size business, including ISPs. His most recent added role is IoT business development in Oman, where he was worked with key customers and partners to provide Cisco data centers, security and smart connected cities solutions. Prior to Cisco, he brings eight years of successful technical management and solution consulting experience gained in the information technologies and security fields. Also, he holds Bachelor of Science in Computer Networks from Napier University, United Kingdom, and Advanced Diploma Computer Programming from Olympia College, Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Turki Ali Ahmadi one more time. Mr. Turki. Thank you very much, Mufuwa. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you today here, and uh, I hope uh, this session will be informative to you. It was a bit uh, challenging to select what topic we're going to talk about in this session, especially in this point of time. But I found out that uh, remote worker will be one a good topic that we discussed today. I'm going to share with you some of the challenges, needs, requirements, and opportunities we are seeing in the market, and we are leaving long day by day currently. So, so today topic and session will be remote worker, securing users wherever they work and on any device. So if you look at the trend now and see how, how the current uh, disruption on the workforce continues to grow with the current pandemic, we see that some statistics show that in the US almost 60% of the employees have type of job they are doing it remotely or from home. But in 2019, that also statistics shows that almost 43% of the global workers also have some work, frequent work done from home as well. But the number has jumped extremely high in 2021 where the pandemic has forced many people to work from home. And there is where we see the increase of what we call WFH working from home frequency. 
and and that shows how things are really changing very fast currently that what what we used to think that some extra work needs to be done at home or remotely now we found that all the job must be done and completed at home because of the pandemic and i'm sure that majority of you has lived that since the last year where you had to do your job wherever you are and with the full lockdown just we are locked to do our full job activities from home this this change had make what i call opportunities to many of the workers or employees and also there is another opportunities for the employees employees themselves have seen a lot of opportunities and here we can see highlight some of those benefits opportunities to the both side employee and employer now from employee perspective or employer perspective the cost of the overhead cost has really reduced where employers in some statistics shows that they saving around 11000 year by year per employee cost some people are wondering how this saving is happening i'll giving you a live example we are here cisco office in oman the office being locked for the almost one and a half year now and you can imagine if you are not running or zero operation on the office how much of cost you're going to save from your billing utility billings you, uh, and also other facilities on the office for some other em uh, employers they has closed their office so their rent cost has gone zero where it used to be very high from the employee side workers has saved around 4k or four four thousand dollars every year on the committing and parking or food and that also another saving for the employee the cost of the travel between the home and the office has been gone down and the time got saved and also their food spending and their parking cost in the other side maintain the business continuity workers maintain a productivity and saving employers around $400 per day because of the productivity has been increased. Maybe there is some doubt in here. It depends how you are implementing your best setup of working from home and how this productivity has increased. I remember last year when we started to work from home, we had really worked like eight hours continuously with maybe one uh, hour or half an hour stop only for lunch or prayers and 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 the environment has forced you to do extra and because you directly access to your computer and your phone you can do more work uh, maybe some of the time used to be wasted as i said on the traveling period from home to office and back versa and also the side chat on the offices or the visitors has taken some time but when you're working at home and you lock down yourself in an office surely the productivity will increase i will i will mention this maybe in the end also how that has impacted after like six months to everybody work from home the productivity and efficiency from worker perspective they said that I mean, statistically there is almost 30 days per year in time being spent committing to the, to the to the work so there is extra work being done and extra time being spent to the work the, the last one here in high productivity and efficiency i said those two himself has its also disadvantages you will see it in the upcoming slides all of that benefits for both employee and employees has also raised some other challenges to the business regardless what type of business we know that some business has totally went down because of the lockdown and they cannot really run because they don't accommodate or they cannot really run their business remotely and you've seen that maybe by just crossing the road some of the shops got closed and some, a lot of people has lost their job but from other perspective those organizations who managed to run their business remotely they have faced a list of challenges and here is i'm highlighting some of them now the security concern was one of the top and second was the application reachability 
and also customers' reachability. So they're always been thinking how they can verify the user identity and make sure that their employees has right access to the application they need to continue their work from home. And how do we enable a secure access to the company to get access to the application? How do we keep our teams feeling connected? This is a very important point. Will itself need another slide. Can we define against potential threats, which is again security issue? And wouldn't it be easier if those applications and managed security or work together to make it easy for operation? Can we get the best of class security without breaking the bank? Now, all those questions has raised maybe after the first round of the pandemic where everybody had jumped to work from home and there was so much of unexpected resources was required, type of access and also devices. If you look at you, your side, maybe every single family has felt that shock where there, every single student has to study from home, where you have to resource them a new computers or tabs to are in their classes, then also install all the needed applications. All of that had highlighted the risk of security from both perspective, the end user security and also the organization security. Any organization start to provide their service publicly for their remote workers has seen the challenges how to get them connected to the right resources by any type of connection. And also how they get access to the right application. The issue that if any one of those application or services got impacted by a cyber threat that could let all the organization down, which is just trying to recover with the pandemic. In one hand, we are trying to get our business continue running, but also we have that big risk. We might get impacted by a security threat and hold the business will go down. And they started to look at what a valuable type of technologies to be implemented. And we found out also it's been challenging how to normalize these new security policies with the users who are not really used to use it. And how are we going to get sure that every single device from the employer side or the end user side will be secure enough to connect to our organization? It was a big thought. A lot of changes organization has to be moving a lot fast to continue their business and take the risk just to keep the business running and continuing. The cost was huge in back to every single organization already because of the pandemic, and they now have to invest to make their architecture their organization ready for their employees to work from home. One simple feature, for example, you wanted to extend your telephony service to the home. And to do that, there was so much of preparation need to be done by the infrastructure on the organization and also a knowledge to the employee to get that. It's the same thing that also when the students have to move to work, to study from home and to get themselves around the platforms like Google Classroom or like, uh, uh, Moodle, if they are not using it before, or other platforms they've been using, Zoom, Teams, Webex, Microsoft Teams, students, families, everybody got really in, in a situation that they have to learn this new environment and they take it with their own challenges to continue their business. So, companies has considered next step and remote workers and only great more risk. And that, that where organization had really to restructure some of their services and found an easier way to provide the service for their employees at home. So they found out there is a new and restricted devices has to access to the organization. And also no awareness of how devices postures could be created a risk. Now you saw that uh, employee at home has taken his organization laptop, but suddenly he is moving for his personal laptop to connect to the organization. And that itself is a risk because that personal device is not as secure as the organization device, which could be a compromise for all the security in the organization. Also use of software as a service based on unsected applications. Now, because of the short time of change happen and you need to get your business alive, you had to move to a new type of applications or a service on the cloud. 
And you've seen that also in education sector, how it's been impacted when the ministry had decided to go with Google Classroom for a, a group of students and goes to another developed application for uh, grade one, two, three uh, in the schools. And that what have seen how services wasn't really as expected because of this big fast change. So preparation was not being done as well. Uh, many organizations has adopted the VPN access to their corporate access. <clears throat> and they found out that many of the employees trying to bypass that virtual private network access and get their own method to access to the organization. And that also another risk to the organization. The awareness and the behaviors that what I mentioned in the previous slide, new environment, new application, new way of working has become on the ground and you have to adopt it and learn how to work with that and itself is a challenge. Uh, users have to depend on their Wi-Fi usage to connect to the network and they are using a classic uh, usual consumer type of wireless, which is another risk for their own themselves and also for the organization data. So whatever is happening, the, the IT and the security teams need to do a lot of change. And some of the changes that I'm highlighting here, verifying identity and establish a trust, where you need to make sure that whoever is connected from whom are the right people to the right application. And also enable work from any connection or any device. You have to adopt that. So the organization needs to be ready to know that the employee himself at home might use the organization or devices or he might use his personal laptop or personal phone to connect to the network. And also need everybody need to work to provide a secure access to a company application and data. And that where you classify the type of users and the type of application, the type of data, then you decide who access which type of application and data. And on the, all the way, their data are going to move from your organization through the internet back to the home and vice versa. You need to make sure it's fully secure and encrypted to make sure that there is no threat. And also you need to make it simple for the management, for the integration and the, for the user themselves. So these five main bullet points that every organization had to sort of to make it as solid as possible to ensure that remoting for working remotely or working from home for the users has to be easy for them, secure, and available at any time, at any location. So, Cisco has worked on this quite deeply. And here I'm going to show you some of the technologies that we've been implemented and using to make things easier for the business owner and for the user on the other side. This will adopt for any other technologies maybe in the market you know, but I'm just here to give you an idea how we've been responding to these business requirements. So we are taking these three elements. So we need to verify the user identity, we need to enable the access, and we also we need to define, define against threats. So defending against threats is a full set of security technologies to make sure the data transfer in the right way. And also giving the right way for the user and the easy way to access to the needed application or needed resources. Verification is the point that you need to make sure that the right employee accessing the right resources and the right data. So that's where we should build a platform with Cisco Secure Work Remote Workers. And that is a group of applications all together, making it much easier and secure and keeping your business running as it's supposed to be. <clears throat> so to secure the users wherever they work from any device, you need to identify an advanced method to identify the applications and the end, end points. Also, you need to have kind of alignment between the cloud security and the edge security. Virtual private network is one core element to establish that connection from home to the organization. And also to make sure that the entity is right, we're using multi-factor authentication. Users will access the corporate and user will access also the cloud services. You can see that in here. So a lot of 
a lot of uh, organization started to host their application on the cloud to make the access from this side much easier, rather than the establishing uh, VPNs directly to the organization. But in many of those, many of those environments, the challenges are still there. And the cost is high regarding the internet connectivity, hosting application within the data center and the organization itself, and where they have to think to move some of those applications to run on the cloud. So one of the tools we call it Cisco Do You. Cisco Do You is a multi-factor authentication application. And it, what it does, it does that empower the remote user to self-enroll on demand. Enrollment himself to the access to the organization. And also it will add a multiple layer of security in few clicks. So it's simple to use. And that where we get that where we get the sorry, maybe outlook notice been disrupting. So multi-factor authentication is required to make sure that every user got the right access in the right time and also from wherever they are. Facilitating the users with access with minimiz minimizing or minimizing the shadow IT. Shadow IT is the term used for the, the users of application is out of the organization itself. <clears throat> so four simple features that every single remote worker will need has been given by the Duo application where we identify the right user, give him the right access, and also doing multi-factor authentication to ensure the right identity, and also facilitating the access with the minimize shadow IT, where you make sure that the users are not using an authorized application to access the organization data, which could break them in a bigger risk. And also it's built a kind of trust, we call a zero trust across all application and user devices. Because if, you just allowed any device to access to your data, that could be a big risk. And here we need to have a complete visibility about what type of devices. Is it a phone? Is it a laptop? Is it a desktop? What type of phone? What type of operating systems is accessing? And does it have the right security applications to allow it to access to the network? And also it has to do continuous inspection. It's just not about authenticating it for the first time, but you need to make sure you are checking it continuously. It's doing the right job at the right time and doing a security posture check. To easy identify device security, managed or non-managed, and doing mobile device management all over to your organization users. Another application which I mentioned about the VPN, we call it Cisco AnyConnect. This, this will allow you to access to the organization securely, where you have a fully encrypted traffic from your home, from your mobile, from your desktop, back to the organization. And that also minimize the risk. It will give you all more visibility, and it's quickly extended to access to remote workers, gain a visibility and control over who's accessing your network, platform, continuously in point monitoring check. So again, endpoint need to be checked in the right way, make sure the right user is accessing the right information, and also the whole traffic is encrypted from home back to the organization. Now, there's so much of benefit that we need to get around the VPN access. It's not about just establishing the connection back to the organization, but also we need to see that every when, when the user is connecting through the VPN or from whom he is protected from any web intrusion. So that will perform what we call web protection from remote workers. Also, we need to do protective threat defense. 
And there's the second layer to prevent any malware spread from the user machine endpoint to the organization. And also keeping every single flow of the data between the user, the internet, and the organization is controlled and checked. To achieve that, we need to add a part of automation based on the deployment. Now, classical type of uh, security manners or security uh, softwares like antivirus will not really do the job here. Classical antivirus will not save the remote worker and the organization from threats because there is so much of complicated techniques now hackers have been implemented to bypass multiple security layers like a firewall or even like antivirus or force intrusion prevention. To achieve that kind of security and visibility, we need to have an integrated compliance method where we have a clearance between the user endpoint security, user antivirus, web security, their email security, and combining an umbrella around their machine to protect it from the external threat and then allow them to access to your organization in a proper method. Multiple access options. And also, this is what we call do it in the multi-factor authentication, MFA. I had mentioned the application we're using here, we call it do you in the Cisco. There's also many other applications on the market that you can depend. One method of the multi-factor authentication is the uh, one-time password, OTB, what we use from our current uh, uh, financial transaction, maybe with any banking applications. That's to add just another layer of security on top of your transactions. So again, a fourth layer or third layer of security is about the Cisco, what we call secure, Cisco umbrella for secure endpoint. The umbrella work is just to secure the user traffic, which is going to the internet and vice versa. Now, as long as you're getting your worker connected from home, that means he is using a machine to access their day-to-day -day activities, maybe uh, browsing the internet, watching video on Netflix, playing games, and that is just totally out of what businesses needed in the other side. But that could cause a big threat to the organization as you are using the same machine to access to your personal activities or gaming or shopping online and also you connect it to the network of the organization on the other side where any threat impacted you from the public internet could be spread to the organization and that will be a big hit to the business continuity of the of, of your organization so with umbrella you having a visibility about all the dns activity happening in the machine and there where you can help your remote worker to be more secure. Detect compromised endpoints through persistent DNS monitoring and block threat before they compromise your. Now, as much as you're trying to secure your remote worker endpoint, in the other side, you're ensuring security to your organization itself. We have seen many of threats coming from end user personal machine which impacted the organizations and brought them down, totally down. And when you talk about a totally down for an enterprise that translated to thousands, millions, or billions of, do of dollars per hour, surely these numbers will go big and big in banking sector, oil and gas sector, and also in risk if you talk about healthcare organizations, if any one of their environment got impacted by a threat. So we need to maintain the last line of defense through secure endpoint. Complete the threat protection across all control points. With a remote worker, the challenge is going more and more. And I say you cannot really dedicate or, or enforce the remote worker to work with a specific platform or a specific endpoint because it will not really be possible but you need to make sure that your security manners or security solutions 
are adopting any type of connection, any type of device to make it really easy for the employer to work and also to make you sure that you have a secure connection to save your data and your application and keep your business running as usual. Surely that cannot be achieved easily only with softwares. You need to also combine that with the knowledge you're going to give to your employees. Employees' behaviors is one of the biggest risk to the organization data. With all the manners you're going to, or softwares or solutions you're going to implement to secure the organization, if it's not combined with a knowledge worker, with a knowledge that the worker used to save his own data and the organization data. And here is that a view when you have a single kind of platform maintaining your user data, your application security, your endpoint security, powered by multi-factor authentication and dynamic intelligent VPN, that where you will reach to a point having a solid remote worker solution that save the data, save the organization business, and also save the worker or the employer personal devices and personal data. Surely th this is not all. I mean, I have gone through the slides in quite fast. But there is so much of things you can look at and get more knowledge about it, how those remote worker technologies are being used. Here is the number of links maybe I could share with you later in this presentation where you can access to see and try some of those applications for your own use or for your education use or also for kind of business use. Now, one more, if we have a student here, with us today in the group, the, one of the opportunities this remote worker has opened is about how you're going to utilize this technology to provide your own service and work as a freelancer to support any organization. And with the current technologies that almost 70% of Regular works can be done remotely. And that has opened a new page for all those who are job seekers. These technologies allow the organization to hire remote workers wherever they are contractually, and also allow those who want to work and give their skills and share their knowledge to any organization smoothly. Both in said has the benefits. And that benefits what we had discussed earlier in the earlier slide here, when we talk about the opportunity in this slide. Now, every single value in here is a value for both. You as an employee getting the service to your organization or to an, a contracted organization in your workforce. Now, the idea of freelancing has been growing in this kind of situation where everybody work from home. That means there is no really actual need for you to be a fully employed. And now with this available of time and working from home, you can serve multiple organizations for a lot of services you have and get your skills sell in the right way. And here maybe I will highlight this for if we have people who graduated or about to graduate and the, with the challenging founding a full-time job. With the remote worker concept, you really don't need to have a full part or full-time job. A part-time job can be done implementing many of those remote working technologies and also will get you more value. I always call it, uh, there, is, there is a big opportunity in earning money. And it's also very fast and it's been done perfectly. Why? Because now employer will save a lot of money as you've seen in the numbers I see in here. And also in the, the employee 
can give his service to multiple organizations where he can gain and earn more money. We have seen many of the instructors providing private classes through remote quarter concepts, and their where has grown their business and also offer their service to a multiple resource, multiple customers, which is not used to be if we look at before on that. And this is one of the, uh, I could say, the positive uh, angle of the current pandemic we are living in here. Thank you very much. I hope this session was informative and we'll open it for discussion and questions at this point of time. Mahfouda for you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Turki, for a very fruitful uh, session. I have a question myself. I'll start from the last slide. When you said a student can work as a freelancer, do you think that companies would trust a freelancer uh, to uh, when it comes to security, to securing its own uh, organization or its own uh, um, devices? Uh, freelancing uh, concept is quite new in the region, so the trust need to be built. It. But from point of point that security is point, we, if you look at the global market, yes, majority of big organizations are freelancing their security uh, consultancy service, not operational consultancy service to a freelancers because there's a very uh, limited resources, well skilled in security you can employ. It. So. If you look globally, there is a shortage in security experts. And there we are freelancers come here. You will not give a freelancing to operate your organization security, but you will give a freelancer to consult, review, do penetration test as a freelancer. I hope this answers your question. Uh, but still, it's a risk. Yani, uh, freelancer is not uh, like... Um, it's not uh, an official uh, organization. It's not an official body. It's just a freelancer by himself. You cannot. Yeah, uh, that's why he said it's not in the operation. You don't give an operation for freelancer and security. But there is a practice where you give a freelancer to audit. You give a freelancer to do penetration test. You get a freelancer to consult new architecture and design. But you have given him access to your network, Yani. Otherwise. And this is also a risk. <laughs> I consider yes, it a yes. risk. That, that, that where that where technologies come to build the measure is not only in security is a risk in any type of operation. For example, if you get someone to do data entry, you will need to get him access to your organization, right? Yeah. So again, he is accessing there. It's again, is about trust and also implementing the right security layers to give right access at the right time, and also a cost compared to requirement. If you said, if you want to employ a security expert, how much it costs you to get a fully employed security expert or to get a freelancer to do a job once a month or once a year? It's again, yeah. this is always a big debate regarding cost and risk. Yeah, and you need to build a formula to maintain it. Yeah, it's correct. Thank you, Mr. Turkey. Uh, let's see if anybody else. You may unmute yourselves if you have any question. Okay, I have another question. <laughs> it's regarding the uh, remote, the, the risks. Um, can you collaborate more uh, regarding the consumer Wi-Fi? How could the consumer Wi-Fi be uh, a risk? Excellent question. That was you catch up this here. Yes, this point. So working on a consumer Wi-Fi without knowledge of a risk. So consumer Wi-Fi and limited functionality equipment. So if you look at the consumer uh, devices, they are always with less capabilities, less features, less security manners. And that is where is the risk. Now, any any consumer wireless always come, for example, with a default password and doesn't has any encryption method, doesn't has any new techniques of uh, uh, traffic filtering. So that consumers Wi-Fi are cheap in cost, but they are limited in capabilities. 
and there where the risk can happen. Now, when you start to work from home, hackers, they know now majority working from home, so they easily can hack your home because you're having a very less secure wireless network or connection to the internet. Did that answer the question? Um, uh, yes, but what we can do, like um, uh, security team, what they can do in order to control the consumer Wi-Fi? Yep, uh, it's a big challenge. Uh, we in Cisco, Cisco has provided a set of equipment, small set of equipment that you can deploy at home, which is an enterprise grade with a different security. Not every organization can do that. But you need at least, if you cannot manage to give your end user a proper uh, devices with the proper security, you need to make sure that your backend data is secure in the right way. So you have the latest uh, next generation firewall, the best VPN encryption, the multi-factor authentication, continuous butchering, that's what I have said here uh, in this slide. Look at this point here, these five more points, you need to maintain them the right way. Verify identity and establish trust. Enable work from any connections, Secure access to company application and data. Protect data from threats. Simplify security with a single integrated platform. So th this is a high level uh, way to do that. And the application here, I mentioned this slide, verifying the entity, yeah. security access, defining against threats. This is what you need to do. In Cisco, what we say, you need to buy Cisco DU for multi-factor authentication. You get for any connect for a proper uh, VPN connection. And also use Umbrella to secure the internet connection in the end user. Although he have a very weak Wi-Fi secure connection, but with this technology, you can maintain every single threat that impacting his device or his or laptop or desktop from a public internet or a home internet. Thank you. Thank you. And there is another question. If we go back to the uh, slide where what security team need to do, uh, yes. uh, no, uh, yeah, yes, yes, no, no, the slide before this one, yeah. Enable work from any connection on any device. This is, uh, it's not a threat to enable work from any connection on any device? Yes, it's a threat, but can yeah. you control it? You can, the point that you cannot provide your employee with a specific device. For example, if you look at an organization who has like 60,000 employees, Ministry of mm -hmm. Education, can they provide a device for every single employee? Can they provide a specific internet connection to every single employee? Yeah, but then how enable work from any connection on any device? Could, uh, could be, I mean, uh, could be a solution when you say uh, uh, IT and security teams need to do this enable work from any connection to any said, device. Yes, we said that you need to make it easy for employee to work, right? Yeah. Now, for you, you need to secure your network, but for the employee, he need to connect. He and needs he need access. To connect. Yes, he need to access by his own devices, by his own internet connection. You, you need to make the security in your side to the maximum mm -hmm. to allow him to work from any connection yeah. and from any device. Correct. So as I said, you need to be that agile. You need to secure your network, but you cannot also emphasize on a specific connection or a specific device. So th this point you need to, is a need, is a business need, but also is a challenge for you in the other side. So that's why you need to secure your access to company application and data. See point number three? Yeah. To protect data threats. Yeah. So there's a need to connect with any device, with any connection. From the other side, you need to maintain the right security manner. Okay. It is a challenge, Annie. I can <laughs> I think you have to do. Thank you, Mr. Turkey. Uh, let us see if there is any question here. Uh, she has. There is one question in the chat um, uh, from uh, Ms. Hamda. She says, why the academic organization not focus on remote work concept instead of bringing the staff in both directions? And I feel still using remote working, not to trust still. Uh, why? It's a question and a, and a comment. Yeah. The first, the first part, 
has no, uh, I could say, final or, or, or right answer. The point that every organization has its own capabilities and its own policies. I totally uh, disagree about remote workers are not secure. Yes, there is a challenge, but you need to work with that challenge and get it fixed. So we, we don't have choices, right? With, with a full lockdown, either then we stop full business or we work, or, or we work remotely, right? Yeah. Now, work, stopping business is not an option. So the, right. the only option is working remotely. When we work remotely, there is a challenges and obstacles. We need to adopt the maximum technology to minimize the risk and make it easy to avoid those challenges and resolve them. Uh, some organizations still asking people to come for office. Yes, I don't really like that. But again, it's a business need or uh, limitation. They have, um, and from my way, maybe I give a message here that please allow everybody to work from home. Any other questions? I cannot see any other question. Please unmute yourselves. If you have any question. We finished the session ahead of time, <laughs> but it was very informative. Let us just wait for two more minutes. So what other advices you could advise those uh, staff, not the security team, I mean the users, the end users, if you have any, uh, any advices uh, that can benefit uh, end users who work from home? So, um, Surely, working from home, uh, I mentioned about the challenges also from personal perspective. I remember when we started working last year from home that we had to spend 8 to 10 to 16 hours uh, in front of our uh, laptops or desktops to do the work and had tied us a lot. Somehow, some in, in some way, people thought that working from home would be a relaxing manner, maybe for some type of work. But not all type of course will give you that relax working from home. So scheduling work is an ex and, and something that needs to be done in a proper way when you start to work from home. Secondly, I could advise using a proper method to access organization data is very important. Don't try to find out workaround to access the organization. That workarounds could damage your organization and put your job at the risk. And that I mentioned where many employees now trying just to do their work. They, they're trying to finish their work, but they're just downloading any type of application that will allow them to access to the resources, which is a big risk. That's what we call show the IT. Don't use any application not certified by your organization. Don't access your organization without a secure connection. Use a proper VPN. Don't use the free VPN application. Free, free VPN applications themselves are a risk. In the other side, all organizations need to provide a proper manner of accessing application. If you don't want to let the, the employee to access the internal campus, publish your services on a cloud provider. So go to a cloud service provider, take out your services to them, and let them maintain the security for you. And they, they are very good on that. For example, here in, we have multiple cloud service providers. Take your applications, post it in a cloud service provider, they will maintain the security for you and it will be easier for your employee to access because they, they will have the right tools to access the application. Another thing that while you're doing your business and you're connecting to VPNs, for example, avoid, avoid multitasking with non organization application because that also could be a risk. You're running a VPN connection to their organization, trying to access your application and also you, you're accessing another source of applications can really be a risk. Try, if you're using, if you're working from home, use a proper VPN connection, 
implement the security practices from your password perspective, uh, update your uh, security applications like antivirus, endpoint security, uh, have kind of DNS security, which is available uh, for many organizations in many organizations. IT team in the other side need to extend the maximum security to the end user devices, have a visibility of what type of devices may be used and also publish and a guide what to be done and what not to be done from whom working from whom. Uh, sure, don't spend so much of time in front of the PCs. Try to move because being being in this situation is not that really healthy. But with all the risk of technology itself, there is also a human risk need to be tackled in the right way. Yeah, it's correct. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Turkey. It says that uh, we have no other question. Let me just scroll one more time before we could end this session. So we will uh, will uh, will follow your advice now not to sit in front of uh, desktop. <laughs> At the end of this very interesting and fruitful session on the remote working opportunities and challenges, uh, join me to thank Mr. Turkey Al Yahmedi. Today's session will be uh, available in ETC channel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Turkey. Thank you one more time. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.